Hello dear students, today we have CSAT 2011 question paper with us and in this question paper if I talk about the questions of maths and reasoning then we can find around 34 questions right and yes uh, this was the year where CSAT used to be counted in the final merit also but after three years it got uh, qualifying in nature only right so uh, Let's talk about these questions and uh, if I want to summarize this question then I should say these questions were not easy, right? These questions were not easy. But again, uh, logical thinking is always required for a CSAT paper. These questions are actually smart, right? So now let's talk about the questions. This question asks each one of the following, each of the following two items consist of four statements. Of these four statements, two cannot both be true, but both can be false. Okay. Study the statements carefully and identify the two that satisfy the above condition. Select the correct answer using the quotes given below each set of statements. Okay. Here, Two statements cannot be true simultaneously, but they can be false simultaneously. The question is saying that, right? Okay. So the statements, next we come to the statements. First statement says all animals are carnivorous. Okay. Second statement says some animals are not carnivorous. Okay. Third statement says animals are not carnivorous. See everyone, first statement and third statement. They cannot be both true together. Why? Because the first statement is saying all animals are carnivorous and third statement is saying animals are not carnivorous, right? So these two statements are contradicting each other, first and third. So they cannot be true. I mean, they cannot be both true together, right? So obviously these two statements are satisfying the given condition in the question. So A option will be considered as the right answer, right? Statement number one and three cannot be true together. Okay, now let's talk about the next question. Next question based on the same instructions, right? Question says each of the following two items consist of four statements. Of these four statements, two cannot be both true, but both can be false, right? Okay, so let's talk about the statements now. First statement says all trains are run by diesel engine. Okay, first statement says all trains are run by diesel engine. Okay, second statement says some trains are run by diesel engine. Okay, third statement says no train is run by diesel engine. Again, everyone, first statements, first statement and third statement. First statement says all trains are run by diesel engine and third says no train is run by diesel engine. Again, they both of, uh, I mean, both of them are contradictory to each other, right? So statement number one and three cannot be together true, right? So again, this time C option will be the right answer. Statement number one and three cannot be together both, right? Cannot be together true, sorry. Clear? Okay. So now let's talk about the next question. Next question says, consider the four age pyramids given below, namely A, B, C, D representing four different countries okay here y axis represent age x axis represent percentage in age class all right so which one of them indicates the declining population everyone de declining population means what question says which one of the following represents declining population declining population means low birth rate right so low birth rate or you can say less birth, right? Or less birth, right? Right? Okay. So now if I talk about the pyramid, all the pyramids here, if I talk about pyramid number A, right? So here base is wider than the top, right? I mean, if you are getting upward, the, the pyramid is getting shrinked, right? It is shrinking uh, from going downward to upward, right? Similarly, B is also getting shrinked, 
okay similarly d is also getting shrinked right but c is not getting shrinked in fact c is getting wider it means what here children are less right in pyramid number c children are less right than the aged people right i repeat in pyramid c children are less because it is it is getting wider if we are going upward right so in pyramid c children are less than the aged people right so obviously here pyramid c represents the declining population clear okay right in fact you can say one more thing here c is odd one out right c is odd one out that you can also say from these four pyramids right the pattern of c is different than the other three right so obviously c will be showing the declining population correct now let's move to other question after that next question says the following figure has four curves namely a b c d study the figure and answer the item that follows question says which curve indicates the exponential growth see everyone exponential growth exponential growth means the the growth is i mean the go, growth is getting increasing day by day right the growth is increasing day by day this is exponential growth so if i talk about curve a so curve a is like this it is zigzag right if i talk about curve b so b is it's like this right so a is this b is this and if i talk about d d is actually fixed for some year right d is fixed for some year uh, let's see around for, for 1400 years d is fixed right this is constant for 1400 years after that it is getting increasing right but c is increasing from the beginning and it is getting increasing day by day i mean year by year it is increasing right fine so c is showing exponential growth right everyone c is showing exponential growth exponential growth means again the growth is increasing year by year right exponential growth means the growth is increasing year by year right so this is exponential growth okay everyone the growth is increasing year by year so c, c is showing that pattern right all right so now let's move to other one next question says the following pie chart show the breakup of disease categories recorded in the patients from two towns town a and town b pie charts plot the disease categories as percentage of the total number of patients based on these answer the two items that follow the chart okay so this is chart a and this is i mean the first pie is showing for town a and the second pie is of town b right so question is which of the two towns has higher number of persons with diabetes okay see everyone here only percentage is given right only percentage is given okay only percentage is given but the question is asking which one of the town which one of the two towns has the higher number right actually we don't have number right number is not given to us right here the population of any of the town is not given in the question right we don't know what is the population of town a and what is the population of town b so we cannot find the number number we cannot find right because here only percentage is given so we cannot find numbers right everyone so here the correct option is option number d no inference can be drawn no inference can be drawn okay now let's 
move to other question next question is based on the same uh, pie chart question is saying what can we say about the persons what can we say about persons with more than one disease from these graphs what can we say about the persons with more than one disease from these graphs okay everyone let's talk about a just calculate the percentage 22 plus 34 is 56 56 plus 13 is 69 69 plus 18 is 87 87 plus 13 is 100 percent fine so this is the graph of 100 percent population right but now if we talk about town b let's add all of them 30 20 it is 50 right 28 and 24 28 24 is 52 52 and 50 is 102 102 and 19 it is 121 right so graph b has the data of 121 percent population right it means what it means some of the patients have more than one disease right it means some of the patients right some of the patients have more than one disease okay because they are being counted in both the disease suppose that mr x has diabetes or diabetic diabetes also and high bp also right so he is being counted in bp also and diabetes also right so that's why this percentage is coming as 121 it is more than 100 so obviously uh, in town b there are persons with more than one disease so let's talk about the options now they are there are likely to be the persons with more than one disease in town a no there are likely to be the persons with more than one disease in town b yes it is correct right so here option number b is the right answer okay everyone so now let's move to another question okay next question says consider the following distance time graph consider the following distance time graph the graph shows three athletes a b and c running side by side for a 30 kilometers race okay with reference to the above graph consider the following statements okay all right so let's talk about the graph first so here it is time and here it is distance right so let's talk about the graph here a b and c these three athletes are there a completed the race b completed the race but c did not complete the race i repeat here a completed the race b completed the race because they are reaching to 30 kilometer mark and the race is 30 kilometers right this is a 30 kilometer race a is reaching to the 30 kilometer mark b is also reaching to the 30 kilometer mark but c is not reaching to the 30 kilometer mark right it means a has completed the race b has completed the race but c has not completed the race right okay after that let's talk about these statements statements are the race was won by a okay b is saying b was ahead of a up to 25 kilometer mark okay statement number three c ran very slow slowly from the beginning okay which one of the following statement given above is are correct okay fine see everyone if we talk about the time so this is if i talk about a so a is reaching to 30 minutes mark approx in less than 25 minutes b is reaching to 30 uh, 30 minutes mark in around 35 minutes right so a is completing the race in 25 minutes approx or less than 25 minutes i can say and b is finishing the race in 35 minutes right so obviously 
A1 there is, that is correct, right? And after that, statement number 2, B was ahead of A up to 25 kilometer mark, 25 kilometer mark, this is the 25 kilometer mark. So for 25 kilometer, this is A, right? So for 25 kilometers, right? A took approx the same, approx the same, right? Uh, approx uh, for 25 kilometers, A took approx 23 minutes, right? It, it is actually less than 25. So let I'm just writing 23 minutes, 23 or 22 point something minutes. But B has taken for 25 kilometers, for 25 kilometers B has taken obviously for 25 kilometers B has taken less time than A right it is around 21 minutes right everyone so B has taken around 21 minutes and A has taken around 23 minutes for first 25 kilometers so option number two, I mean in statement number two says B was ahead of A up to 25 kilometer mark. This is also correct, right? Now let's talk about statement number three. C ran very slowly from the beginning. Okay, fine. So let's talk about for the first 10 kilometers. So for first 10 kilometers, this is C, right? This is C. So for first 10 kilometers, C took only three minutes approx. But for first three kilometers, B took around, uh, sorry, for first 10 kilometers, B took around 7 minutes, right? And for first 10 kilometers, A took around 17 minutes. So it means initially C was running very fast, right? C was ahead uh, than the other two persons, right? So initially C was running very fast actually, right? So third statement says C ran very slowly from the beginning. This is not correct, right? So first two statements are correct. One and two only, right? This is choice number B. I mean, option number B is the right answer. Okay, everyone, fine. This is actually a very good question, right? Here, you have to interpret the data very correctly, right? This is a good question. Okay, fine. Now let's talk about the other question. Next question says, consider the following figures. Okay, fine. So this is 2, 3, 2, 6, 6, 24. So this is what? 2 into 3, 6. 6 into 4, 24. And 2 into 40 is 80, right? So 3 into 3 is 9. 9 into 4 is 36 and 3 into 40 is 120. Okay? Right? Clear? Question is, what is the missing number? Missing number is 9. Okay, everyone, I repeat the pattern. This is 2 into 3, 6. 6 into 4, 24. And 2 into 40, it is 80. So 3 into 3, this is 9. 9 into 4, 36, and 3 into 40, it is 120, right? It's a, again, I mean, if it gets clicked to you, then it's a simple question. If it is not getting clicked, then obviously it is, it will take time, okay? So now let's move to another one. Next question says, study the following figure, okay? A person goes from A to B, always moving to the right or downwards along with along the lines how many different routes can he adopt okay fine so just give the name to these uh, points first it will be easy for us to calculate the number of routes so let's say this is c d e f g and this is o this is the center so this is o so the condition is what 
moving to the right or downwards right moving to the right always moving to the right and downwards so we cannot go to left and we cannot go to upward right so these two movements are not possible always right and downward only this is possible right okay fine so first root is what a root number one a g b root number one a g b right root number one root number two uh, here we missed one name so let's say this is p right so root number two a p b root number two is a p b right now root number three a e o d b a e o d b root number four a e o f b root number five a c o d b root number six a c o f b right so total we have six roots with us right we can count them manually right so if we just want to count them they are six right and obviously it is uh, the it is an easy counting kind of thing right but if you want to do this question from formula from a mathematical formula right so this is what this is actually a 2 by 2 grid right so let's say this is m cross n so the mathematical formula is m plus n c m this is the mathematical formula right and the topic is permutation and combination right so this is what 2 plus 2 c2 so this is 4c2 and the value of 4c2 is 6 but yes uh, i'm not suggesting this to everyone because this can be done only if uh, i mean if you are if you have the mathematical background then you must be knowing all these things if you don't have the mathematics background or or if you don't have the science background i mean uh, so it is difficult for you to retain this formula right so obviously like this approach is there you can count them it will be like hardly it will take one minute of your in the examination right so because the figure is very simple right and they won't give the bigger figure because they don't want to check your mathematical skills right they just want to check your analytical skills so obviously you just have to count these figures that is okay right okay fine so here the answer is six so now let's talk about the other question This question says during a party a person was exposed to contaminated water a few days later he developed fever and loose motions he suffered for some days before going to a doctor for treatment okay on starting the treatment he soon became better and recovered completely a few days later okay the following graph shows different phases of the person's disease condition as regions a b c d e of the graph right okay after that here in the graph in x axis they have given time and in y axis they have given the number of bacteria right after that there are questions based on it first question says which region of the curve corresponds to the incubation phase of the infection incubation incubation phase phase means what incubation phase means just uh, uh, i mean very initial phase right so before starting suppose that if a baby is there in the womb of the mother then it is called incubation right or if eggs are uh, there i mean eggs are 
there for the you know for the suitable temperature to to get hatched then it is known as incubation right so incubation means very initial phase before starting right so obviously there uh, uh, there won't be much impact of uh, the bacteria will be reflected during incubation phase right there won't be much impact there won't be much impact of bacteria right during incubation phase right so obviously which region of the curve correspond to incubation phase of infection incubation phase means infection won't be much visible right incubation phase means infection won't be much visible so obviously here region a in the graph if i talk about region a here infection is very much visible right or in fact it is it is negligible also right so only region a is showing the incubation phase of the bacteria of the infection right so this is a only right this is incubation okay now let's talk about the other question the question based on the same graph the next question says which region of the curve indicates the persons begin showing the symptoms of infection symptoms of infection so obviously here in reason b the symptoms are very much showing right okay fine so option number b is the correct choice right now let's talk about the uh, next question next question says which region of the curve indicates that the treatment yielded effective relief effective relief effective relief means what the infection is getting less right so obviously here e region shows this the the effective relief right so here c option e region is the correct one right clear it's a it's a good question and in fact it's a simple one also right but yes you have to develop the thinking according to the question right all right now let's talk about the next one next question says there are four routes to travel from city a to b and six routes from city b to city c how many routes are possible to travel from city a to city c see everyone a to b there are four routes right b to c there are six routes right so total a to c is just multiply both of them you will get the answer right so total 24 routes are possible from city a to city c right this is uh this is a simple question provided you should know how to solve these questions right if you know how to solve this question is simple for you but if you don't know how to solve then obviously if you are counting by uh, by drawing from city a to city b there are four routes and then from b to c there are six routes then this question will become a very cumbersome question and it will take a lot of time of your right so that's why the previous year questions are important because you know uh, uh, during the examination uh, any any of the examination if i talk about any competitive examination it always repeats its pattern right i mean the the pattern of the questions will getting repeated uh, after 2 years or 3 years like you will get the same question i mean you will get the same type of questions after some uh, some 2 3 years right so now let's move to another one next question says a contract on construction job specifies a penalty for delay in completion of the work beyond a certain date is as follows rupees 200 for the first day 250 for the second day 300 for the third day and the penalty of each succeeding day being rupees 50 more than the than that of the preceding day okay how much penalty should the 
contractor pay if he delays the work by 10 days okay everyone so first day it is 200 second day it is 250 third day it is 300 fourth day it is uh, 350 and so on right so this is first day this is second day this is third day this is fourth day and what about tenth day so tenth day will be what tenth day will be 200 plus 9 into 50 right because it is what it is 200 it is what it is 200 plus 50 it is 200 plus 2 into 50 it is 200 plus 3 into 50 right so this is fourth day we are multiplying this with 3 this is third day we are multiplying this with 2 right so if this is 10th day so we'll be multiplying this with 9 right so 10th day will be 200 plus 9 into 50 okay so this is what this is 200 plus 450 so this is 650 right so 10th day the total penalty will be 650 now the question is saying what the question is saying the question is saying how much should the contractor pay if he delays the work by 10 days so the 10th day's penalty is rupees 600 but the total penalty is we need to add all these numbers the total penalty we need to add all these numbers right so this is 200 250 350 up to 650 we need to add right so this is actually an arithmetic progression right an arithmetic progression ap right so if we have to add ap so we have to add all the terms of an ap so there is a formula formula is a plus l by 2 into n a is the first term l is the last term 2 is 2 and is the number of terms right so 200 plus 650 divided by 2 into 10 this is the answer right okay everyone so so 200 plus 650 divided by 2 into 10 is the answer right so this is 850 850 by 2 is 425 425 into 10 is 4250 right so this is the final answer 4250 will be the final answer right so the final answer is rupees 4250 is the final total penalty right friends this question requires a background of uh, mathematics if you have then you can solve this question easily else this will be a difficult question for you to solve in the examination right so now let's talk about the next question next question says consider the figure given below and answer the item that follows okay in this figure shown above op1 and op2 are two plane mirrors kept perpendicular to each other okay s is the direction of a beam okay of the light falling on the mirror op1 the direction of the reflected beam of the light from the mirror op2 will be okay see everyone this is actually a simple question if you have the idea of simple mirror so in simple mirror so there are two simple mirrors are kept perpendicular to each other so if this is the ray of light is coming to it then obviously it will be reflected like this right it will be reflected light like this okay so here now if this is the reflection going to this plane I mean going to this mirror then obviously again the reflection will be like this right okay the reflection will be like this clear so here friends the question is what the direction of the reflected beam of light from the mirror OP2 OP2 is this right so the reflection of OP2 the direction is this so this is actually parallel to S right so what is what are the options option number a perpendicular to s no 45 no opposite and parallel yes opposite and parallel correct 
right because opposite is why because it is coming here s is coming towards op1 but this reflection is going i mean going uh, far from op2 sorry far from uh, this i mean opposite to s right so this is the correct answer clear now let's talk about the next question next question says consider the following figure and answer the item that follows what is the minimum number of different colors required to paint the figure given above such that no two adjacent region have the same color okay so let's say we'll be starting with three colors red green and blue right so red green red blue red blue red blue right now let's say we have filled green here okay then again red blue red blue red blue red blue right so no two adjacent colors are same here right so obviously total three colors are required to to uh, fulfill the given condition right so here the answer is three colors all right let's move to another question right so these type of questions are actually simple question that, that you can attempt in the examination hall right uh, but yes again you have to be very careful while solving these type of questions because if you have lost concentration you may make mistake right so now let's talk about the other question next question says consider the following figure and answer the item that follows a square is divided into four rectangles as shown above okay the length of the sides of rectangles are natural numbers okay the areas of two rectangles are indicated in the figure okay what is the length of each side of the square okay fine so this is 15 right area of rectangle is what area of rectangle is length into breadth right this is l into b right so this is what this is given as 15 for one rectangle and this is given as 48 for another rectangle right so 15 and 48 these are two area of the rectangle so 15 is what 15 into 1 it can be or it can be 5 into 3 right and for 48 it can be what it can be 48 into 1 24 into 2 16 into 3 12 into 4 6 into 8 right after that it will getting repeated fine so these i mean these type of sides are possible 6 uh, like uh, 48 into 1 24 into 2 16 into 3 12 into 4 6 into 8 right and here 15 into 1 and 5 into 3 so just try to attempt this 5 into 3 first right so let's say this is 5 let's say this is 5 and this is 3 right and this is what 6 into 8 48 so this is let's say 8 and this let's say 6 so if this is 5 then this is also 5 this is 8 then this is also 8 and this is 3 then this is also 3 right so and this is 6 then this is also 6 So this is what this is eleven by eleven square of eleven by eleven, right? So here the side of square is eleven by eleven, which is what which is eight plus three, or you can say six plus five, or six plus five, right? So this is eleven, right? Or it can be some something else. Uh, it cannot be something else because it is if we take 15 into 1 or 5 into 3 so uh, no it can't be something else right because it is not following any other uh, thing so 
this is 11 right yeah next question says a person has only rupees 1 and rupees 2 coins with her okay if the total number of coins that she has is 50 50 is the total number of coins and the amount of money with her is rupees 75 then the number of rupee 1 and rupee 2 coins are respectively okay friends just go through options please please go through options right so 15 into 1 and 35 into 2 15 into 1 is 15 plus 70 this is 85 this is into 1 and this is into 2 so 13 to 1 is 30 and 14 to 2 I mean 20 to 2 is 40 so this is 70 now this is 35 into 1 and 15 into 2 so 35 plus 30 this is 65 this is into 1 and this is into 2 so this is 25 plus 50 this is 75 right everyone so this is 75 so option number D is correct right just go through options right this is this can be a simple question for you if you use the options right like through the help of options this can be solved easily okay so now let's talk about the other question next question says three persons start walking together and their steps measure 40 centimeter 42 centimeter and 45 centimeter respectively what is the minimum distance should what is the minimum distance each should walk so that each can cover the same distance in complete steps see everyone this question based on LCM right LCM of 40 42 and 45 we need to take the LCM of 40 42 and 45 centimeter so 40 is what 40 is 8 into 5 so this is 2 cube into 5 42 is what 42 is 6 into 7 so 2 into 3 into 7 45 is what 45 is 9 into 5 so this is 3 square into 5 okay so LCM of these three numbers will be what 2 cube into 3 square into 5 into 7 right this is 2520 centimeter or you can say 25.20 meter right or you can say 25 meter and 20 centimeter right so the option is what a option right a option is the correct one clear all right so now let's move to another question next question says if a bus travels 160 kilometers in four hours 160 kilometers in four hours it means what 40 kilometer per hour right this is the speed of bus and a train travels 320 kilometers in five hours so the speed of train will be what 320 kilometers in five hours so this is 64 kilometer per hour right okay uh, question is a bus travels for uh, 160 in four hours and train travels 320 in five hours at uniform speeds then what is the ratio of the distance traveled by them in one hour see everyone distance traveled by them is I mean the ratio of distance traveled by them is the ratio of the speeds only right so ratio of the speeds speeds is equal to ratio of distance right ratio of speeds is equal to ratio of distance right so ratio of distance is equal to ratio of speeds so obviously uh, what they are asking bus is to train we need to find right so bus is to train we need to find so bus is 40 train is 64 so this is like both the numbers are divisible by 8 so this is 5 is to 8 right the answer is 5 is to 8 see everyone in options they have given 8 is to 5 and 5 is to 8 also 
So obviously we need to follow the order of the question. I repeat, we need to follow the order of the question. The order of the question is what? Bus, bus is written first, right? So bus will be taken first and the train will be taken second, right? So bus is to train we need to find. So obviously the answer will be five is to eight. Fine, correct op option is option number B. Okay, everyone, fine. So now let's move to other question. Okay, next question says, there are 100 students in a particular class. Okay, 60% students play cricket, 30% students play football, and 10% students play both the games. Okay, what is the number of students who play neither cricket nor football? All right. See, everyone, question is saying, this question belongs to Venn diagram, right? Okay, question is saying, there are two games, cricket and football. Cricket and football. 60% students play cricket, 30% play football, and 10% play both the games. 10% play both the games, right? 60% play cricket. So this is the oval of cricket. 10% is already there. So we are left with 50% now. And football, 30% total. Then obviously we are left with 20% here, right? Just add all of them. So 50, 10, 20, it is 80%. So 80% students play at least one game, right? So now what is the question? What is the number of students who play neither cricket nor football? Okay. So percentage of students who don't play anything is equal to 100 minus 80. So this is 20%. So 20% students don't play any game, right? But here the question is asking what is the number of students, right? So number of students, there are total 100 students. So 20% of 100 we need to find. So this is obviously 20, right? So the correct answer is 20 students, right? B option is the correct one, right everyone? So now let's talk about the next question. Question says, a village having a population of 4,000 requires 150 liters of water per head per day, okay? It has a tank measuring this. The water of this tank will last for, okay, fine. See everyone what? This is what? This is actually the supply. Sorry. This is actually the supply. And this is what? This is demand or you can say requirement. Right? We need to find for how many days that water of the tank will last. So obviously, what we have to do? We just have to do supply divided by demand. Right? That's it. Fine. So supply is what? Supply is 20 into 15 into 6 meter cube fine and demand is what 4000 into 150 liters right so obviously this is 1800 meter cube and this is what this is 60 followed by four zeros liter right 15 into 4 is 60 and then followed by four zeros so this is supply divided by demand and one meter cube is equal to 1000 liter right so just convert meter cube into liter so 1800 and then liter divided by this right okay everyone fine so what we are getting the five zeros five zeros are getting cancelled so this is three days Right, so the answer is three days, right? So option number B is the correct choice, right? The answer is three days. Okay, fine. Now let's move to other one. Okay, next question. In order to be a teacher, consider the following argument. In order to be a teacher, one must graduate from the college. Okay, all Poets are poor. Okay. Some mathematicians are poets. No college graduate is poor. See everyone. No college graduate is poor. And all graduate are, I mean, 
to become teacher one must graduate so no graduate is poor it means no teacher is poor i repeat no no graduate is poor it means no teacher is poor why because to become teacher he must be graduate right so no teacher is poor okay everyone now the question is saying all poets are poor so no teacher is poor so it means no teacher is poet no teacher is poet right okay so what is the question which of the following is not a valid conclusion so no teacher is poor teachers are not poor it is a valid conclusion yes poets are not teacher it is also a valid conclusion some mathematicians are not teacher obviously some mathematicians are poet if some mathematicians are poet why this statement then obviously some mathematicians are not teacher this is also valid and some teachers are not mathematicians this we can't say some teachers are not mathematicians this we can't say right so option number b is the right choice b is not valid according to the given statements right everyone b is not valid fine see here in spite of drawing a venn diagram we can solve it by thinking only right based on the given statements fine okay now let's move to the next question next question says a student on her first three test received an average score of n points okay so for first three test his score was n n and n right this is the best case if she exceeds her previous average score by 20 points on her fourth test okay fine so on her fourth test she got n plus 20 why because for the first three test her average was n so we just have considered the best case scenario in every first test she got first three test she got n n n marks right so one first test second test third test and fourth test right okay so this is the situation right the best case scenario we have considered for first three test she has got n n n in all the three test so obviously the average is n and in the fourth test she got 20 more than the average right so she got n plus 20 so then what is the average score for the first four test then obviously total n n n and n plus 20 divided by 4 this is the average right so this is 4 n plus 20 divided by 4 so this is 4 n sorry capital n so this is n plus 5 this is the answer right everyone n plus 5 this is the answer simple one right a very simple question fine now let's move to other one okay next question says in a group of persons 70% of the persons are male okay fine let's say there are total 100% then 70% are male then obviously rest are female so 30% are female right and 30% of the persons are married okay if 2/7 of the male are married so 2/7 of the male 70% are the male so this is what this is 20% of the males are married okay so 20% of the male are married question is saying 30% of the persons are married so obviously 10% females are married right so total 30% are married they are married right okay so 10% females are married it means what uh, 10% females are married and 20% females are unmarried right 20% females are unmarried 
टेन परसेंट फीमेल्स आर मैरिड ओके वॉट फ्रैक्शन ऑफ द फीमेल्स आर सिंगल दिस अनमेरिड इज सिंगल ऑल्सो राइट देन ऑब्वियसली दिस इज ट्वेंटी परसेंट आउट ऑफ थर्टी परसेंट आर सिंगल सो दिस इज टू थर्ड राइट ट्वेंटी परसेंट आउट ऑफ थर्टी परसेंट आर सिंगल देन ऑब्वियसली दिस इज टू थर्ड फाइन सो वॉट फ्रैक्शन ऑफ द फीमेल्स आर सिंगल सो टू थर्ड फीमेल्स आर सिंगल राइट ओके द सिंपल वन टू थर्ड फीमेल्स आर सिंगल ओके नाउ लेट्स मूव टू अदर क्वेश्चन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन से इज द हाउस ऑफ ए एंड बी फेस ईच अदर ऑन द रोड गोइंग टू नॉर्थ साउथ ओके एवरी वन दिस इज नॉर्थ दिस इज साउथ दिस इज ईस्ट एंड दिस इज वेस्ट ओके द हाउस ऑफ ए एंड बी फेस ईच अदर सो दिस इज द रोड गोइंग नॉर्थ साउथ राइट दिस इज द रोड ऑफ नॉर्थ साउथ सो द हाउस ऑफ ए एंड बी फेस ईच अदर ए बींग ऑन वेस्टर्न साइड ओके फाइन सो दिस इज हाउस ऑफ ए एंड दिस इज हाउस ऑफ बी दे आर फेसिंग ईच अदर ए इज ऑन वेस्टर्न साइड राइट ओके फाइन ए कम्स आउट टू हाउस टू आउट ऑफ हिस हाउस टर्न लेफ्ट एंड ट्रेवल्स फाइव किलोमीटर्स देन टर्न राइट ओके ए कम्स आउट टू हिस हाउस टर्न लेफ्ट Five kilometers and then turn right five kilometers. Okay, fine. This is the situation. A comes out to his house, turn left, turn five, uh, run five kilometers. I mean, walk five kilometers and then again turn right and walk five kilometers. And the same happens with B. Question says. Uh, and travels five kilometer to the front of D's house. Okay, here D is living. I repeat the question from the beginning. The house of A and B face each other on a road going to north south. A is being on the western side. This is clear. A comes out of his house, turn left, travels five kilometers, then turns right, travels five kilometers to to the front of D's house. Okay, fine. So here D is living. Right, B does exactly the same and reaches in the front of C's house. So obviously B is coming out of his house, turns left, right, turns left, and then turns right. Okay, this is the situation. So five, five, and here C is living. Right. So everyone, this is what this is actually. Uh, the situation of like this the, right this is this kind of situation after that what which one of the following statement is correct c and d live on the same street no is not correct c's house face south mm, c's house face south face south no it is not correct the house of the houses of c and d are less than 20 km apart we need to find the distance of c and d's house right this is so friends if we draw this if we draw this square right so this cd will be the diagonal of this square right and the side of this square will be what 10 okay the side of this square will be 10 and cd will be the diagonal of this square okay everyone cd will be the diagonal and the side of the square will be 10 so diagonal of the square is what diagonal of the square is side root 2 right by pythagoras theorem you can solve it easily so side is what 10 and root 2 root 2 is what 1.41 so this is 14.1 so obviously which is less than 20 km right so c option is the correct one right so this question is based on direction sense as well as a little bit geometry right so this is the right answer this is less than 20 km right now let's talk about the next one let's come to another question a b c d and e are members of the same family okay so this question belongs to puzzle right 
There are two fathers, two sons and two wives, three males and two females. Okay, fine. So let's say these are males, three males, right? Three males and two females. Okay, fine. So three males and two females. All right. Okay, fine. C is the youngest person in the family. So last statement, C is the youngest person in the family and D is the eldest person. See everyone, here there are two fathers. This is father and this is father and this is son and this is son. So two father and two son. So there are three males. And obviously two females are there. So this is grandmother and this is one mother, right? Okay, D is the eldest, fine, so D, right, D is the eldest and C is the youngest, so this is C, C is the youngest, right, E is not male, neither the wife of a professional, after that question is saying B is male, here, last one, B is male, so B is male, so D, B, C are male, so obviously A and E. E are female, right? So E is not the male, neither the wife of a professional. Now let's talk about the question from the beginning. I mean the second statement here. The teacher was the wife of a lawyer who was the son of a doctor. Teacher is the wife. So teacher is female, right? And lawyer, lawyer is what? Lawyer is the son of a doctor. Lawyer is the son, son means male, right? So teacher is female and lawyer is male, okay? So teacher is the wife of the lawyer who was the son of a doctor, okay? E is not the male, neither the wife of a professional. So E is obviously, E is neither the wife of a professional. And question is saying, teacher was the wife of the lawyer. So E is not the teacher right because e is not male so it means e is females but she is not the wife of a professional so e is female and d is not doing anything right and here a is female right the teacher was the wife of the lawyer so a is teacher and b is the lawyer and B is the son of the doctor. So D is not doing anything because E is not the male, neither the wife of professional. So D is not doing anything, but E is the doctor, right? And C is the youngest person in the family. So this is uh, the thing. There are two fathers, two sons, two wives, three males, two females, right? So this is uh, the whole situation. Right, so D, B, C are males, E, A are females, B, A husband, wife, D, E husband, wife, C is the youngest son. Right, so this is the situation. Now the first question is how D is related to A, D is related to E, sorry. How D is related to E, D, E are husband, wife, so D is the husband of E. Okay, A option is the correct one, right. We will use the same chart for the further questions. Right. So next question is saying, who are females in the group? So females are obviously E, A, right? E, A are females. Who are females in the group? Again, I'm showing you the figure. Females are E, A, right? Okay. So C option is the correct one. Next question. Whose wife is a teacher? Whose wife is a teacher? So obviously, the wife of B is teacher, right? Whose wife is a teacher? Wife of B is teacher. Whose wife is the teacher? Wife of B, right? Okay, all right. So these type of questions you should solve in, uh, you should solve in the examination, why? Because you just solve one question, it takes around uh, uh, two to three minutes or four minutes might be, but you can uh, you can get the marks of around three to four questions because three four questions are clubbed in 
in one single instructions right okay so now the next question comes okay next question is in a survey regarding the proposed measure to be introduced 2878 2878 persons took part of which 1652 were males okay so total 2878 total out of which males and females obviously so how many males 1652 were males participants were there right so obviously this is 6212 right 1226 were females participants were there 1226 person voted against the proposal while 796 were uh, on which 796 were males 1425 persons voted for the proposal 196 females were undecided how many females voted for the proposal okay fine so there are three categories in male females also voted for voted against and not decided right so three categories voted for voted against and not decided right okay everyone i repeat it again i mean in a survey regarding a proposed measure to be introduced 2878 persons took part of which 1652 were males 1226 persons voted against the proposal of which 796 were males see everyone 796 voted against and 796 males voted against right 796 males voted against so this is 796 males voted against total 1226 persons voted against right so this is 430 females voted against right why because 1226 minus 796 right so this is total voted against these are total against right and they are male against right so obviously the rest is female against right so you will be getting 430 right everyone these are female against the bill okay fine these are the female against the bill so 430 female are against the bill right okay now question is saying 1425 persons voted for the proposal and 196 females were undecided if 196 females were undecided so this is females 196 females were undecided right so total how many females were participated total 1226 females were participated out of this this is 430 were against 196 were not decided right so this is what this is 400 30 plus let's say this is 200 so this is 630 so 626 right so see for female female right so for female is equal to 120 1226 430 plus 196 right so this comes out to be 600 so female are i mean 600 females are for the bill right 600 females are for the bill okay now the question is saying the next line of question is saying 1425 persons voted for the proposal right so 1425 persons voted for the proposal out of which 600 were females right so this is 825 males were for the bill a 25 males were for the bill right okay and just add these two numbers and subtract it from 1652 you will get how many males were not decided right so this is for just assume this is let's say for example uh this is uh this is 1625 and then 27 and 31 so 31 males were undecided right so this is now your table is complete now your table is complete i mean your data is complete fine so now you can solve the solve any question based on the given data 
first question is how many females voted for the proposal for the proposal how many females 600 females voted for the proposal right okay all right now next question next question based on the same question i mean same instructions how many males were undecided 31 males were undecided let me show you again 31 males were undecided not decided right 31 males were not decided so this is 31 males were not decided okay next question how many females were not in the favor of the proposal how many females were not in the favor of the proposal so females were not in the favor of the proposal let me show you the figure females were not in the favor i mean against the proposal female against this is 430 right how many females were not in the favor of the proposal this is 430 all right everyone the answer is 430 fine so again this question is based on puzzle and it is my personal recommendation that you should solve these type of questions because here you will crack the data once and you can get the marks of around three to four questions right because three four questions are clubbed with the same data right okay now let's move to another question next question says in a queue mr x is 14th from the front and mr y is 17th from the end okay let's say this is the queue this is the front end and this is the bottom end right or rear end so mr x is 14th from the front okay so let's say there are 13 students are here and mr x is 14th and 13th are ahead of mr x right okay and why 17th from the bottom so obviously 16 students are behind y and then y is 17th from the bottom i mean from the end okay fine and now mr z is exactly between x and y exactly between means what the number of candidate before this is z right so the number of candidates here and here are equal right same candidates are here and here number of candidates here and here are equal because mr z is exactly between x and y right mr x is ahead of mr y okay and there are 48 persons in the queue 48 persons total so everyone if 48 persons total then here 14 till here there are 14 candidates and till here there are 17 candidates right so 14 and 17 is how much how many numbers i mean how many candidates 14 plus 17 this is 31 and total there are 48 so 48 minus 31 is 17 right so 17 students are standing between x and y right so 17 minus 1 is z right 17 minus z is 16 students 16 by 2 is 8 so 8 student 8 students are here and 8 students are here and between them is z right so this is eight and this is eight right this one is what this one is z right and this 17 is what between x and y right okay fine so the answer is question is saying how many persons are there between x and z so x and z total eight persons are there right this is the answer this question is based on uh, ranking concept right ranking concept this is an easy topic of uh, reasoning you just have to give around i mean if you give uh, 40 to 50 minutes once in the preparation of this topic of uh, reasoning i mean ranking this is the topic if you give 40 50 minutes in the preparation this topic you can cover and obviously like any question from this topic you can solve easily right so please try to prepare this topic this is my personal recommendation because every year you will get one or two questions from this topic yeah right so i guess this top uh, uh, i guess now this video is over so thanks everyone thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the session thank you thank you everyone